Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Beeple Mountain. I was sent a very nice prototype of Martin Wallace's new game called Rocket Men by Phalanx Games. Rocket Men is a type of deck builder game where you need to manage rocket power to send rockets to either Earth, the Moon, or Mars. And you will need enough technology to get to whatever location you desire and a little bit of luck. You are racing all other players to visit these locations and fulfill certain missions to achieve points. The harder the mission, the more points that is worth. Be the first to successfully achieve that mission and you will also score more points than other players if they decide to fulfill that mission later in the game. Each player will start the game with their own player board that keeps track of their cards and everyone starts the game with 12 cards. These beginning cards are the 12 missions that you can perform in the game, and you will probably achieve 5 to 6 of them. On these cards, it will show you what locations that you can try to visit. Along with those options, it will show you the rocket power that you will need, which is represented by this icon here. It also shows how many mission success cards that you will be able to flip over in hopes to have a successful mission. You will always flip the same amount of cards for each location, so you have three cards to attempt to land on Earth, four for the Moon, and five for Mars. When attempting a mission, you will take the rocket token and start on the launch space. To get to Earth, you will need a total of eight points, ten points for the Moon, and a lucky thirteen for Mars. The mission success cards are always shuffled, and depending on your location, you will flip over a certain amount of cards. A 3, alright, starting off good. A 1, okay, not so good. And a 0, yeah, so I didn't make it. So I don't want you to think that that's everything to this game. You'll be able to take a head start or use different technologies that you will be able to purchase. But I know you're curious about what are the possibilities of these cards in this mission success deck. So let me show you that first. There is one four, four threes, six twos, five ones, and two zeros. That's 18 cards in the deck. So you really never know for sure if your mission is successful or not until you flip over the cards, and sometimes even the last card. If you have a successful mission, then you will receive an ongoing benefit that is listed on the bottom right of your mission card. It is also listed on the side of the board where you will place one of your tokens showing you successfully accomplished that mission. If you're the first one to do that mission, then you will gain the higher number of points. And then anyone else that does the mission later will receive the lower number of points shown in the area that is big enough for multiple tokens to be placed. So let me get back to setting up the game since you kind of have an idea of what the object of the game is. Asset cards are divided into Asset 1 and Asset 2 decks, teal and pink, and there are 12 threat cards. You'll put one Asteroid Impact, one Pandemic, and one Climate Change Threat cards into the teal deck and to be shuffled, and the remaining nine are shuffled into the pink deck. After shuffling, the teal deck is then placed on top of the pink, and six cards are placed out for purchasing. These cards are purchased by paying the price listed on the bottom. Each card, like your mission card, has two areas on the card that you need to know about, the text and the top left corner. These icons will help with certain missions or be required to purchase cards, especially later in the game. These cards here are always left out to purchase, and they are the engine cards. Each stack is more expensive, but gives you better engine power as well. You can only purchase one of these cards per turn, and it will help you fulfill engine power requirements for your missions. If you look at your starting mission cards, some of them have this icon, which can also be used to boost the engine power. The cards really are multi-use cards, but there is a better way to use them once you understand the game. Now let's revisit the board, and then we'll go to the individual player boards, and then we will explain what actions you will be taking on your turn. So, cards on the bottom forms the market here, with the engine cards being available until they are all purchased. 
This is the mission path here. You'll be collecting points from either cards in your launch pad or as you flip over mission success cards. The moon and the Mars start with a token and the first player who completes a mission to those locations will receive that token, which is worth a point at the end of the game. Each location has a box of potential missions to that location, five to Earth, four to the moon, and three to Mars. If you were to compare your mission cards that you start the game with, you will be able to see that you have a card that matches each of these places on the board, but there are also some differences. For example, you have three manned spaceship cards because you could do this mission in each of the three locations, and that's what it shows on the card. But a satellite mission can only be done for Earth and the Moon. So you can only have two of those, and those two locations are listed here on the card as well. Asteroid mining can only be done on Mars, so you can only have one card of it, and it can only be used for Mars. Now you can see that next to each of the planets, there is an icon. Earth has this technology chip, the moon has this beaker, and Mars has this DNA strand. Cards with those icons can be added to your mission attempt to give you an added head start. For example, if you were heading to Earth and you had these cards here in your launch pad. Since you have three technology chips, if you were to launch a mission, you will move your rocket token to the number three before you start flipping over mission success cards. Let's see how it goes. A one, a two, and my last card, a two. Oh, phew, I just barely made it. Now you should know that each time you flip a card, you have a chance to abort the mission. This is important because if you fail a mission, all the cards that you put in your launch pad will be discarded and you will have to start all over again. But after each card that you flip over, you have a choice to either abort the mission or keep going. And when aborting the mission, you will just need to discard the number of cards in your launch pad by the number of mission success cards that you flipped over minus one. Doing this might help by saving cards in your launch pad to relaunch the mission later, but sooner than later than if you fail. The last thing I will mention on the board is these top two spaces that are used to place game variant cards after you understand playing the game normally. You will place two of the cards out which can change what might be worth points or consequences if there are too many threat cards out on the display. There are different cards that do different things. Let's visit the player board now and explain what a turn will look like. Your deck will be placed in the middle section. From the starting 12 mission cards, you will choose one to work on and place it on your mission site. When doing this, it'll cost you $10. If that mission card has money in the top left, then it can be used to pay for itself. The launch pad will consist of cards that will help your mission be successful it will consist of rocket power cards, cards with launch pad abilities like this multi-purpose space suit. When a mission success card is drawn and I don't want it to count, I can discard my multi-purpose space suit to discard that mission success card and keep drawing cards. This would be great if I flipped over a zero. Now here you will also need to pay $10 to place each card in the launch pad. When using cards like Pain to place cards in the launch pad, you will place used cards in the holding area. Each card you used for your turn will be placed here. And if you have to discard any card from your hand or the launch pad or the mission site, then it will go here in the holding area. Also, cards you purchase will be placed here. At the end of your turn, all of these cards will then be placed in your discard pile. These circles on the top of your board are used for tokens with ongoing abilities that you can gain from successful missions. This might be money, mission icons, engine power, or even hand size. These can be used once per turn and when used they are flipped over. Now let me explain what you can do on your turn. There are four different actions that you can do, any of them in any order. You can buy cards from the display, so I have $50 here, so I will discard $40 to buy this card that's worth 
30 bucks, I can still use the remaining $10 if I use it to buy another card. But I can't use the extra 10 bucks if I wanted to place a mission card down or put a card in my launch pad. I then add my purchased cards to my holding area with the money that I spent. A new card is immediately flipped and fills the empty slot, except it will be pulled down. Now I can keep buying cards if I want, but whenever I buy a card that is pulled down showing this X, then that will be the last card that I can buy this turn. So with the extra 10 bucks that I overspent with and this 10 bucks, I will buy this card here. Again, only one fixed engine card of any type can be bought per turn, and the money can't be split between buying cards and placing cards. Threat cards will pop up every so often, but more so near the end of the game. Those cards will all have a price and an icon that you need to purchase the card with. Each of these cards are worth two points at the end of the game, and they can be the difference of winning or losing the game. They will, however, thicken up your deck and cause you to have less options on your turn when you draw them, because they don't really have an action associated with it. There are other cards that will let you remove these cards or other cards from the game to help you thin out your deck, and if done this way, the card will still be worth those two points at the end of the game. Let's now cover placing cards on your mission site or launch pad. So before you can place any cards on your launch pad over here, you have to have a mission card placed first. And you can only have one mission card placed at a time. So I will place this mission card here, which costs $10 to place it, but the card pays for itself. And this card that has this technology chip on it, I will add to the launch pad as I plan to launch to Earth, and doing that costs $10, so I will place my $10 here in the holding area to pay for that card. Now you can place as many cards to your launch pad as you would like, but you cannot have any duplicates of any card that have the same name on it, even if it has a different icon on the top left. Also, threat cards and cards with money can never be placed in the launch pad. The third action that you can take on your turn is you can choose to discard cards from your hand or cards in your launch pad to your holding area. You can also even discard your mission card if you would like, but when doing this, all cards in the launch pad will also be discarded as well. Discarding a card also means that you're going to place it in your holding area and it'll end up in your discard pile. The last action that you can take is to launch a mission, which is always a nervous, scared, and exciting action each and every time that you take it. So to launch a mission, you will need the minimum amount of rocket points indicated on the destination of your mission card. You can count rocket points from your launch pad and tokens that you have on your player board. And if you don't have enough rocket points, then you can't launch the mission. You will then place the rocket at the launch site and you will place one of your player tokens at the destination where you want to attempt on the mission track. That would be Earth, Moon, or Mars. The number of cards that you get to draw is indicated on your mission card, and the points you need to fulfill is indicated on the mission track here. From the stated destination, you can then figure out how many icons you have in your launch pad or ability tokens that match that destination, and you can move the rocket forward that many places for a little head start. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown, engines on. Shuffle the mission success deck, and cards are drawn one at a time, and you will move your rocket forward. At any time, you can abort the mission. You will need to discard the number of cards from the launch pad equal to the number of mission success cards that you drew, minus one. I'm just mentioning this again because it's important to know. If you end up aborting the mission, your turn ends immediately. If you ever reach the target number, then your mission becomes successful. All launch pad cards will then be placed in your holding area to be placed in your discard pile, and the mission card will then be removed from the game. You gain your bonus token that has an ongoing effect, and you place it on your board, and you will also add your player token to the mission on the board that matches your card and then your turn will immediately end as well. Cards in your holding area will then be placed in your discard pile.
If you fail the mission, drawing the last card and not making it to the destination, then you must discard all the cards from your launch pad. The mission can be kept if you wish, and if you fail, your turn will then also immediately end. No cards can be played from your hand during launch, only cards that you have in your launch pad, and you can use both the text and the symbol on that card. You also can only send only one mission to every place in the space, meaning you can only go to Mars and do that mission on Mars once, but if you can and it allows you, you could do that same mission but go to the moon. So if you have a token on the board in the destination of a certain type, you cannot do it again. When your turn is done, always remember to move all the cards from your holding area to the discard pile. Refill your hand to your hand size and flip any used tokens to the color side. And move any lowered cards from the display up. Players take turns until the end of the game is triggered by either moving past the marked in-game icon on the point track, having a player token on all 12 spaces, or if a player places their 5th or 6th token with at least one token in each location, they can decide to end the game. If one of these things happens, the round will finish and the game ends. You will count up all of your threat card points and points from your personal goals, and whoever has the most points will win the game. Now that you know more about the game, let me show you what a normal turn might look like. I hope this helps so you know how to play the game and what it might feel like. The game is a deck builder, but it has a different feel from the typical deck builders that are out there. If you're looking for a game where you can make moves and choices to ensure that you are successful, then this might not be the game for you. Because when playing, we have seen players who have great odds landing their missions. For example, they have a huge bonus boost and only need eight more points and they will be drawing five cards to make it to Mars. Well, one card after the next show a low number, and on the last and final card, they end up not making it. They placed a lot of cards in their launch pad to prepare for this mission, and did so more than others, but they still weren't able to successfully achieve the mission. On the other hand, at times, you just launch a mission without having many cards prepared. For example, here I will try to launch to Earth with only having a mission card and the rocket power needed from my tokens. No head start. If I get three lucky flips on these cards, then I can be successful without spending much time at all preparing for that mission. You never know what the flip of the cards will give you, and the fact that there are 18 cards gives you a wide range of possibilities and odds. At the beginning of the game, you might think that this is a long, long time to launch a mission, but in Rocketman, you will be launching all the time. I really like the wide possibilities of missions you choose as well. Every player has the same chances to launch each of the 12 different missions. Also, if another player launched a mission already, then you can still launch that same mission, and you will just score a point or so less than whoever did it first. I also like that points aren't solely scored from missions, but threat cards can hugely affect who wins and loses the game, or even if a player achieved their personal goal and by how much they did. The game isn't a game where you score a ton of points, so one or two points is very valuable, and the score usually ends up being very tight between players. 
When playing, you will also realize that a lot of cards in the display sound great, and you will most likely want all of them. But then you will want to buy engine cards as well, because that gives you good rocket power. So in the game, you will need to realize that you won't be able to get all of the awesome cards. And you will need to decide what type of card might benefit you most now, but also benefit you most in the future. If you're a player who likes figuring out your odds and then pushing the limits to seeing if you can get through it or not, then this would be the perfect game for you. The games can run a bit long if players aren't familiar with the game, but once understanding the game more, players will tend to launch missions more often and even if they do so just to abort it later. You can plan to launch your mission more often and placing cards in your launch pad knowing that you might need to discard them when aborting the mission. I know it is early in the year, but this is the first game that deserves a spot in the top 10 games of the year for me, as it is very likely it'll stay there. You'll be launching several missions when playing Rocketman by Phalanx Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table. Three, two, one, blast off!